16th, 2023. We are live in the Brandywine High School Auditorium, also broadcasting via Zoom. Ms. Harris, may I please have a roll call? Ms. Robot. Here. Mr. Heller. Here. Reverend Dickerson. Here. Ms. Scott. Here. Mr. Ackerman. Ms. Pigeon. We have a quorum. Thank you. This time, I would like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time, I would entertain a motion to approve this evening's agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to request that we remove item 10A until November. Um, I guess we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as is first. Um, would anyone like to change their motion or reconsider before we consider? So I guess we'll proceed then with the original motion and second for the agenda as is, and then after that we'll see. Uh, all those in favor say aye. All those opposed say aye. Nay. 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 Take it a roll call, Ms. Harris. Wait. Mr. Strobot. No. Mr. Heller. No. Reverend Dickerson. Not have an approved agenda. I'll Do make a motion to approve the agenda with the removal of item 10A until November. Mr. Heller has a motion to approve the agenda, removing item 10A. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We're going to proceed with an agenda. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, starting out, we will uh, have Ms. McIntyre with uh, our building and District Teacher of the Year, nominees and winners. Uh, good evening, Mr. Strobot, President of the Board, all board members that are present right now, and Superintendent Kohler. It is my distinct privilege and honor uh, to bring up our Brandywine School District 2024 District Teacher of the Year for the Brandywine School District. Would you please help me and join me in celebrating Dr. Nader Macarius? We have a video presentation that uh, we would like to share with you. We have some other of our teachers of the year that are joining in from a celebration that we had acknowledging our building winners. For those that our, uh, or I'm sorry, for those that our, are our building winners, if you are in the room at this time, if you could come up as well, we would appreciate that. Um, if you could come up at this time just so that we can acknowledge you for those that are here. And what I'm going to ask is that you can just go up on the stage and just stand in front of the table but not in front of the screen. Thank you so very much. We want our public to also see the amazing additional dynamic teachers that we have working for us in the Brandywine School District. Yeah, just a little to the right so we're not in front of the screen. Are we ready, Mr. Reed, with the presentation?
That was the final temperature. It started with 22. 23. 23, and ended up with? 35. My name is Nader Makarius. I'm a chemistry teacher at Brandy One High School. I got my undergrad from Egypt. I moved from Egypt in 2000. During this time, I visited many public schools, and I, I started to get the idea, OK, I want to teach here. Like, I, I like this system. Then over a weekend, I remember I got a phone call from an uh, assistant principal said we have a chemistry position. They asked me if I'd like to come for an interview on Monday. I said, yes, I will do it. Um, I came on Monday, and since then, I didn't leave Brandywine High. You did a great job, guys. You did a great job. Like, I remember the, in the interview, principal asked me, what will you bring to the school? I paused for a minute and I said, I will bring my accent. By saying this, I, I was referring to my culture. Uh, I was referring to some international view. Totally different aspect which will enrich the environment here at Brandywine High. At the same time, the opposite happened to me. I was learning here. I was learning from the kids. I was learning from the teachers. Each student culture he is. When they bring their culture to classroom, this is kind of enrichment. I'm learning from them, they are learning from me. The diversity we have here, it's a great. Everyone here can safely express their mind and give their opinion without any fear. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who's doing this, but everyone in this building does the same thing. And all teachers at the district doing the same thing. We have the culture of acceptance and we're supporting all kids regardless. I agree. Anyone disagree? Feel free to disagree with me. One thing I learned here at Brandywine through uh, my years of teaching, never assume. And that's why I focus more on building personalities, building skills, get people ready for the future, and the content, what they need for college or future workforce, I'm providing this as well. Please clap it up, shout out Mr. M Dr. Macarius, as he is our 2024 Brandywine School District. First getting recognized here or chosen to be the school teacher of the year, this is a great honor because I know uh, I'm working with amazing teacher here in this building. So just to be me representing them, that was great. Then I had the, the great surprise from the district. I felt overwhelmed, like, okay, now I have some heavy load over my shoulders because I'm representing not only my school, but the entire district and a community because the district is not an isolation of the community and parents. We all on this, in the same boat. The process itself helped me to reflect more on my practice and what I do in a school. It, it, it gave me a very good feeling about what we do here at Brandywine is great. And I see the product of this school and this district, and I'm very proud of the kids here. Dr. Macarius, if you would come and join your colleagues and colleagues who are our district uh, and building winners, please go ahead and step down and uh, thank you. Yeah, so just a little bit more there. Quite a few of you. All right, awesome, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please help me in celebrating one more time our Brandywine School District School Building winners for Teacher of the Year 2024. Thank you, um, and you can stay for Dr. Macarius' celebration. Dr. Macarius, on behalf of the Brandywine School District, as well as our District Board of Education, we would like to thank you. You are a man of many, many talents. I had the pleasure of hearing you greet our brand new teachers, and I can tell you, you left them with a lot of humor, as well as a challenge, but hope for the work that they are going to do now that they are in the Brandywine family. So on behalf of the district and our Board of Ed, congratulations. We have an jacket for you. We have a building winner. You also get your building winner award. Here's your apple and a certificate. And now we're going to have, um, hold that for one second. We're going to have Miss Reggio, your wonderful principal of Brandywine High School, share with us some of the many, many reasons that are countless uh, to state 
as to why you were her choice and their choice for the district and the building winner. Thank you. What a tough act to follow. Congratulations to all of you wonderful teachers of the year. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to honor and celebrate our Brandywine High School and Brandywine School District Teacher of the Year, Dr. Nader Macarius. Dr. Macarius is an exceptional educator who has shown time and time again the qualities that make him stand out among his peers. One of the most remarkable attributes of this fabulous educator is his ability to engage students in the subject of science, and not just science, but chemistry. Every day, Dr. Macarius works to bring science to life. His dynamic teaching style captures the interest of his students and makes learning fun and exciting. Those are the students' words, not mine. I have personally witnessed the experiments in the cla and class discussions that engage students in critical thinking and problem solving. The level of student participation in his classroom and the risk-free environment he creates are both excellent examples of the worthiness of this recognition. One of Dr. Macarius's colleagues shared the following. He has a unique way of incorporating humor into his lessons through storytelling. His stories always have a twist that leaves the students with questions. All of a sudden, students want to know what happened or how something happened. That's when he has them hooked, and his students then have to perform an experiment to answer their own questions. Sorry, I didn't know I wasn't going to have a podium. <laughs> there we go. What truly, what truly sets our Teacher of the Year apart is his deep understanding of his students. Dr. Macarius doesn't just see names on a roster. He sees unique individuals with their own strengths and challenges. And because of that, he tailors his teaching style to meet the diverse needs of his students. He understands that education is not just about imparting facts, but is also about nurturing young minds. But it doesn't stop there. Dr. Macarius's commitment extends beyond the school and into our broader community. He worked with the first BHS STEM team collaborating with math, science, and engineering colleagues to create interdisciplinary lab experiences for students at the University of Delaware. He has also been our faculty sponsor for both Science Olympiad and Odyssey of the Mind for many years. His passion for education is evident in the way he inspires and uplifts the spirits of those he teaches and the staff around him. Dr. Macarius is an inspirational role model for both his students and fellow educators. His impact on the hearts and minds of those who have had the privilege of learning from him is lasting, as I have personally heard from former students and former parents. Thank you, sir, for your dedication, passion, compassion, and for all of the contributions you have made to our school and the lives of our students. Congratulations. And Dr. Macarius, as the district winner, we have a, another a token of our appreciation for the great work that you do. And on behalf of your colleagues and our community that is here to celebrate them and you tonight, we wish you the very best. He goes into the state competition, which will be determined in just two days. So stay tuned. We are super optimistic. And either way, just know that you deserve the honor. Thank you all so very much. We celebrate you. We appreciate you. And for everything you do every day for our Brandywine children, thank you. Thank you. Some of the others in the audience, we had a nice little ceremony for the teachers of the year uh, earlier this evening where we got to you know, share with their friends and family and members of the board to hear some of the individual stories. Uh, it was just a small glimpse of why they were selected as their, their building teachers of the year. And like I said to them th then, they represent the best of everything that is great and what makes Brandywine School District great. So. We thank them again, and to Dr. Marcaris, the state competition is always one of my favorite times of the year because I know that 
Brandon White School District is putting forth a nominee that is more than deserving of the state title. And I know that our teacher of the year coming out of Brandywine has the, um, you know, certainly a better than average chance to, to win that title. So on behalf of the Brandywine School Board, we wish you the best of luck. We support you, we're rooting for you, we thank you. And personally, on behalf of uh, all the parents that have ever had the privilege of having a student <clears throat> go through your class and share in your educational journey. Thank you. Next, we have an introduction. Um, we're going to introduce publicly, I think, for the first time, maybe, uh, the executive director of the Wilmington Learning Collaborative, Dr. Burke. Welcome. Good evening, uh, members of the board, uh, Superintendent Holder, um, and members of the greater Brandywine community. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. Um, and again, congratulations to all the amazing educators uh, being recognized this evening. Certainly a, a hard act to follow. Um, um, well, <laughs> lots happening. <laughs> what I hope to do this evening is just spend a few minutes uh, giving you um, kind of a, a broad, uh, we're painting with a broad brush stroke um, everything that is WLC, everything that is emerging, and how I've spent my first uh, 60 days into the role. Um, last time I spoke, uh, met with some of you, I talked about um, some of our priorities at a very high level, and of course, one of those priorities included um, communication, engaging with community stakeholders, um, getting into all nine of our WLC schools, spending time with principals, uh, spending time with our district teams, really understanding um, everything and anything uh, that uh, kind of creates the fabric of um, our nine schools and the, the many nuances, the commonalities, as well as the uniqueness of each of our uh, buildings and our communities. Um, so I'll start there. Um, I think go ahead and forward to the next slide. So uh, it's been a number of weeks. Um, I've been out and about. You've, um, I've uh, crossed paths with many of you uh, throughout uh, my many engagements. Um, first and foremost, um, when I stepped into the role, I sat down with each building principal to better understand the needs and aspirations of all of our schools. Um, I spent time in classrooms on a weekly basis to better understand the instructional infrastructure supporting teaching and learning. Um, communication and transparency is very important to me. So uh, each week, all WLC council members uh, do receive um, a quite a robust summary of everywhere I've been, who I'm talking to, what I'm talking about, um, what's in the works, um, any draft ideas, um, uh, agenda items for upcoming meetings. I try to um, tee up future conversations so that when we do gather as a, at a as a council, um, everyone has been well informed, and there has been a lot of meaning making that goes into um, into our collaboration and into the work. Um, one piece of the communication process that I'm excited about is our partnership with uh, First Ascent Design. Um, as you know, uh, WLC is um, right now it's it's a it's a grand idea. It's a community. One thing that we certainly need is an identity and a recognizable brand and a website uh, that serves as a hub for connecting our many uh, different communities. So we have started the journey with First Ascent Design. Um, our district liaisons, uh, and I'll speak more about them later tonight, um, has played a critical role in um, informing this journey, beginning with um, thinking about our values and what it is that uh, represents our nine schools. Something else that I'm excited about, um, as you know, I'll be building out the Wilmington Learning Collaborative uh, leadership team. So last week, uh, early last week, we posted uh, four positions that we will be hiring for. Um, I'm excited to say as, as of today, um, we've been flooded with applications. We will have to close the um, application portal um, due to the sheer volume of folks, um, many locally uh, who are interested in this work. Um, so the four positions that we'll be hiring for include um, two operational roles, uh, senior ad admin assistant, of course, uh, a, dir a director of operations uh, to make sure that our functionality as a nonprofit 
um, is um, what it needs to be. Um, and then two teaching and learning roles. I'll spend a little bit more time on these roles. Um, the Director of Educator Pathways. Um, across our nine schools, uh, we do have a number of classrooms, um, a, a number of vacancies in classrooms being served by substitute teachers as well as paraprofessionals. And we wanna make sure that the adults serving our children have career pathways. Um, in our minds, our paraprofessionals should grow into our teachers. Our teachers should grow into our teacher leaders and our teacher leaders should fuel our school leadership pipeline. So this particular role, this person will be charged with creating a caseload uh, across schools and identifying next steps for our many educators. Part of this work will also be the expansion of the current uh, teacher leadership program. Um, it is my belief that a teacher leadership program uh, should not be a one-year effort, but a multi-year uh, tiered effort if we truly want to support retention of um, our amazing educators as we uh, have seen this evening. Uh, the second position, uh, Director of Learning Systems. This is going to be that person who provides on the ground support and making sure that there's continuity um, uh, across our schools, making sure that it connects, that we're asking our students to demonstrate mastery in ways that are um, that are rigorous, uh, making sure that there are clear learning objectives and that we're um, leveraging all the resources that we have at the school and at the district level to drive teaching and learning. So this person will have a, a very on the ground role in supporting many existing systems and finding where those gaps exist and providing those supports and resources. Um, next, I'd like to highlight our district liaisons. So I've been very fortunate to work with um, three district liaisons representing each of our WLC partner districts. And I will, will say that these three leaders, um, I mean, they, they single-handedly drove my onboarding as a new executive director. You know, this is not a role you step into and you're handed a, a binder or a file system, right? You step into it, you hit the ground running. And the three district liaisons have really served as the conduit of information, connecting me to people, places, historical artifacts, um, run, running interference as needed, um, you know, uh, really being, um, you know, those, those thought partners that I need um, to better understand uh, and make meaning of, of our current schools and systems. Uh, they've played critical roles in helping me think about educator leader teams and designing the educator leader team uh, innovation project, which I'll speak about next. Um, they, we collaborate on uh, school visits, including CSI and TSI visits, and looking forward to working closely with them um, as the WLC evolves. Okay, October. Uh, October is going to be a critical month for a number of reasons. And one of those reasons is that it will be the first time we bring together all nine WLC principals. So on October 26th, uh, next Thursday, I'll be convening all nine of our principals. This will be the first time they're in the same room together. Uh, they're able to really engage in some problem solving thought partnership. Um, we'll spend an entire day together. We'll be meeting uh, downtown at the DSU Riverfront building. And the goal of that day is to really create um, not only uh, not only to begin relationship building, but to create this cohort experience. You know, we're going to be um, going through this journey together. And it's important that we understand the commonalities that exist in our schools and that we can actually thought partner together to pilot and introduce uh, new solutions. So we're hoping to leave that day not only with a set of shared priorities, but with also some uh, a, a clear understanding of those decision points that we'll need to make and the areas in which we'll need aut autonomy to truly um, drive our efforts. Um, we'll also spend some time uh, doing some design work, uh, thinking about the structures for our site-based community councils, as well as our educator leader teams. Um, another big decision that is on the table, um, hopefully after tomorrow's council meeting, I'll um, have a, a lot more to share in terms of um, our partner and the process and the timeline. Uh, but something that I've spoken about uh, since I stepped into the role was the need for a landscape analysis of, of all nine schools. So uh, we've been vetting a number of organizations. Um, um, during tomorrow's council meeting, I will uh, make a recommendation uh, as far as who we should move forward with. And this will entail a, a real thorough examination of our teaching and learning systems, focus groups, data reviews, classroom observations, uh, student focus groups, teacher focus groups, really getting into the weeds of teaching and learning. And from this process, uh, what we um, hope to, uh, what we will arrive at is a set of 
um, priorities and a set of recommendations, and that will help us uh, steer the, the resources and supports um, in the coming uh, months across our nine schools. Um, two more items before we, um, before I close out. I know I was told five to 10 minutes and I thought, oh, it's nearly impossible to capture everything. Um, so I'll start with something I'm very excited about. I think this is going to be really the first stake in the ground for the WLC. Um, so just earlier today, we launched what we're calling the Educator Leader Team Innovation Project. And this is going to be um, kind of the first assignment, the first charge of our educator leader teams, where they will have a chance to actually design, pilot, and implement a new solution to address one of their current school priorities. They'll have full control, full creative control and autonomy around what this may be, and they'll have the support of the WLC in terms of coaching, uh, funding, and resource allocation. So a lot more to come. Um, we're treating this uh, as a very, as very much a journey, right? We, we want to show that if we truly want to empower schools, then we need to trust and support those who are closest to teaching and learning. And I think this is one of the many vessels that we can use to actually do that. Um, you'll see a lot more as um, our website and our uh, branding emerges, but we are gonna follow the journey of these nine ELT teams and uh, see you know, wh what happens when you kind of remove kind of those attached strings and say, you know, think about your most creative idea for addressing uh, a teaching and learning need. So we're very excited to launch this. We'll have our kickoff. Um, on November 2nd, this will be a virtual kickoff where we've invited all nine ELT teams, uh, school leaders. Um, this is kind of the pep rally, kind of going through uh, the process, going through the, the proposal and timeline. And um, from there, uh, we'll be working with our WLC partners, including Empower Schools, Delaware State University to provide technical assistance, our three trusted uh, district liaisons to support our ELTs. And I, I think this project is really going to uh, take off and we're going to have quite a few uh, creative and inspiring narratives to uh, share. I'll close out um, with, uh, I know there have been a lot of questions uh, around budget, so I just wanted to um, share that the WLC's current budget is 16.6 .6 million. This includes uh, 6.6 .6 million uh, in carryover funds from uh, last uh, the last fiscal year. Um, for those who don't know, WLC's spending plan requires multiple layers of approval. This includes uh, the Joint Finance Committee, the Controller General's Office, as well as the Office of Management and Budget. So it's our budget narratives go through a very rigorous uh, process. Right now, our operational budget narrative is still undergoing the approval process, and our programmatic budget narrative uh, will likely be voted upon at tomorrow's uh, council meeting. So um, stay tuned for uh, the finalization of everything and um, everything uh, that is going to transpire over the next uh, nine to 12 months. So very excited, and thank you again. I'll uh, source any questions you may have. And you can share the last slide. That's just my contact info. I know, member, I know members of the board have had a chance to meet you individually prior to this meeting, but you know, thank you for coming out and kind of introducing yourself to the community, sharing with what's going on. Uh, certainly, like we all knew from the very beginning when we started this process with MOUs that it was a, a heavy lift. Um, you know, I've heard great things about the work you're doing and your availability and your uh, visibility within the community and within the schools. And uh, I'm looking forward to hear more about the uh, Principal's Day on the 26th and how that goes. Yes, one thing I, uh, thank you for that. I forgot to mention that the governor will be joining us for uh, breakfast that morning. Just uh, a, few, a few more comments. Uh, first, Dr. Borgers, like to say thank you. Uh, you truly did hit the ground running. Uh, trying to start an organization from scratch is incredibly challenging. And that's exactly the work that you are engaged in at this point. Uh, there's there's going to be a, a lot of work. And uh, the team that you're recommending fully support those positions uh, because that work, again, 
of building something from nothing between three districts is going to be a heck of a thing. And I would also just like to take one quick minute to recognize and name the value of the liaisons of each district. And uh, for the community members who might be tuning in, those in the audience tonight, we just ask uh, that Ms. Lavina Jones Davis please stand so that uh, those in the audience can see who you are. And thank you, thank you for your work in supporting Dr. Burgos and our participation in WIC. One additional question. So I you know you mentioned the landscape analysis and focus groups. Is there any data sharing from the endless number of studies that have been done over the last 10 years regarding education in Delaware that you know can be incorporated? And in, you know, I think while some things are being start, started from scratch, a lot is you know, has a lot of history to it. So just, you know, if there's any information there that can be shared to shorten that window in the analysis and, and, and building out that plan, I think that would be helpful. Agreed, agreed. Our 2019 studies with West Ed, you know, when you dig into the details and the recommendations, um, uh, some, much of, much of it is still very much relevant. Uh, so we'll be talking a little bit about that tonight at the council meeting. I'll also be uh, tonight, tomorrow night, <laughs> tomorrow night. I'll also be sharing data around uh, teacher retention and, you know, what we're learning from exit surveys as, as uh, where do teachers go when they leave. So I'll be sharing some uh, data points around that as well tomorrow evening. Thank you very much. Any, any last minute questions? Thank you again for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry for going over time. Next up, we have Mr. Kenny Rivera to talk about our school choice open house. Good evening, members of the board and Superintendent Haller. Tonight, I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss school choice with you and the members of our community. Delaware School Choice Program allows families living in Delaware to apply to enroll their children in any Delaware public school, regardless of their home address. With a few exceptions, family must choose their children into, or choice their children into schools on the school choice application window. Many families across the state, both in and out of our district, want to attend one of our 16 strong schools, even though the school isn't in the attendance feeder zone. Our school's strong climate and culture, exceptional programming, and talented educators attract many students to choice to a Bernie Wine School. On an upcoming slide, you'll see the key dates regarding school choice for the next school year. The school choice window um, will open for the 24-25 school year on Monday, November 6, 2023. The application window will close on January 10th. 2024. School districts have until February 29th to extend the invitation to students, and the families have until March 16th to accept these invitations. We are also offering a number of information sessions to families to better understand the process and the program options for this year. If you're interested in more specific details on school choice, on the process, how to apply, then join us this Thursday evening, October 19th at 7 p.m. right here at Brandywine High School for a choice information night. We will have district and school staff members on site who can answer questions about our programs and the choice application process. For families in our Spanish immersion program, we're offering a session for the transition to middle school and a different session for the transition to high school. Last week, I had the pleasure of discussing these plans and listen into input from the first cohort of immersion students who are ready to matriculate into high school. We're also offering sessions for families who are interested in learning more about our IB program at the middle and high school levels and gifted services at the middle school level. And note that immersion students are able to take part in both immersion and IB programs. IB representatives from Mount Pleasant High School will be visiting Tally IB students next week. And in conclusion, families can find out more information on the statewide school choice website, www.schoolchoicede.org, 
Anyone with questions regarding choice should call or email district office and we'll be sure to answer your question quickly. I would like to conclude by thanking all the families who took their time to visit our high schools yesterday during their open houses. It is incredible to see the remarkable offerings and all the amazing opportunities that we offer our students. It is hard not to walk away from these events and think anything other than proud to be BSB. Any questions? No questions, but I unfortunately was unable to attend the high school uh, open house on Sunday, but everything I heard was that it was one of the best ones yet. It was well attended. You know, I'm always excited to see you know, the community come out and see all the offerings that we have in all of our high schools because I think they're top notch. U.S. News World Report thinks they're top notch. So congratulations to all the building administration, the teacher volunteers, the administration that put that on. I know it's a big undertaking to get hundreds of people through three schools in one afternoon, um, but it seems like it went off without a hitch. So thank you. Great, that'll lead us into the superintendent's report, news and updates. President Scrobot, Vice President Heller, members of the board, members of our audience. I'm thrilled tonight to share this superintendent's report. I want to take a moment to congratulate Crystal Day from Concord High School as our Brandywine School District Educator Support Professional of the Year. Crystal was surprised with the award late last month and this is our first opportunity to formally congratulate her on this district achievement. If I remember correctly, this is the second time in three years that the District Education Support Professional of the Year was a Concord staff member. So congratulations, Concord. Since the last board meeting, all three Brandywine School District high schools participated in the HBCU Week Fair in Wilmington. HBCU Week was launched in 2017 under the leadership of Mayor Mike Prezicki. Since its inception, the Week's College Fair has resulted in more than 3,500 on-the-spot college acceptances and more than $23 million in scholarship awards. We're proud of our BSD students who took advantage of this opportunity and have already secured college admission and scholarships at HBCU colleges and universities. I want to thank all the families, as Mr. Scrobot just pointed out, who came to our high school visitation day yesterday, October 15th. We had hundreds of families in attendance at our three events. All three high schools did a phenomenal job showcasing their academic programs, athletic offerings, pathway programs, clubs, special events, and more. I want to share a special thank you to the students, staff members, and administrative teams who planned and participated in these events to ensure our prospective parents could truly see our buildings and programs in action. As just shared by Mr. Rivera, I encourage interested parents and community members to attend our Choice Information Night this Thursday evening, October 19th, 6 o'clock p.m., right here in Brandywine High School. The event will not only provide a brief overview of all of that our district has to offer, but will also feature the opportunity for families to begin their choice application on site alongside our team members who can assist with any questions. For more information, visit our website, brandywineschools.org backslash choice. 
The Brandywine School District Parent and Citizens Advisory Committee held a successful relaunch last week with a great turnout of enthusiastic parents and citizens eager to serve the Brandywine community. The Brandywine School District Parent and Citizens Advisory Committee, known as PCAC, was formed to provide the district with opportunities to disseminate information about programs, services, priorities, and educational issues and to solicit feedback and input from our community. Thank you to BSD board members, Mr. Ralph Ackerman and Ms. Kim Stock for their efforts and hard work at leading this committee and to the parents, community members and district administrators for their service and guidance. Last Friday, all districts across the state engaged in professional development of staff. Most often, districts contract with regional or national professional development providers that are experts in their specific areas. BSD is fortunate to not only have such staff on our team, but working directly in the classroom with our students. Special thanks to those teachers listed on the screen for sharing their expertise, commitment, and passion with their BSD colleagues. Thank you for your guidance and insights. Speaking of teacher leaders, we are excited to announce a new BSD grant funded initiative this year, the Dean's Development Program. Through proactive forward thinking leadership development, this in-house apprenticeship provides BSD deans with authentic performance tasks to build and strengthen the skills, knowledge, and best practices to one day effectively help lead and manage the schools within the district. The picture here is the Mount Pleasant High School administrative team. All three deans at Mount Pleasant High School are enrolled in this program. We currently have 18 deans of students across the district in this program. Safety and security, always something on the minds of the district and parents. Uh, want to make sure that our parents know that safety and security remains the highest priority in the Brandywine School District. We're dedicated to continuous improvement and investment in the latest security measures and training. Through collaboration with local and state of law enforcement, we've been working behind the scenes on several comprehensive safety and security initiatives to ensure that our schools provide safe, nurturing, and secure learning environment. I bring this to the board and audience's attention tonight to share our desire to provide a presentation on safety and security initiatives at a future board meeting uh, in the near future. The performance arts calendar for the 23-24 school year is now live. You can find the calendar link on our district homepage. This includes performing arts events being held at all of our district schools. BSD's coordinator of visual arts, Dr. Dominic Pisano, worked with all of our district teachers to assemble this comprehensive listing. While creating this document, Dr. Pisano quickly noticed that in 181 school days for students, the Brandywine School District Music Department will present over 160 performances. This means that as a district, we easily average more than one performance per day, or almost average one performance per day here in the Brandywine School District. That number is only calendar dates. It doesn't include individual performances like the Blue Rocks, spring festival trips, local parades, community events, and the like. Thank you, Dr. Pisano, and to our music educators for making BSD a best in community music recipient. National Principals Month is a tribute to the pivotal role principals play in leading schools and shaping the futures of our students. We are 
recognizing one principle each day this month on social media. Please take your time to go on to our Facebook accounts, Instagram accounts, and like those posts to show your support, appreciation of the work that our building principles do day in and day out. Brandywine High School is proud to report that Malti John, class of 24, has been identified as a semifinalist in the 2024 National Merit Scholarship Program. Malti has been named as one of 16,000 semifinalists nationwide for her academic talents and achievements. She will continue in the competition to be considered for one of the approximate 7,000 National Merit Scholars who will be considered for a total of nearly $28 million in scholarships for next year. Congratulations, Malti, on this outstanding recognition. Forward Elementary School nutrition worker Terry Burris was featured on Fox 29 segment, You're Awesome, and awarded $1,000 for endless efforts to help her community. Let's take a look at her video. Excited to introduce you to my newest segment. It's called You're Awesome, as the sign says. You know, the news can be negative sometimes, so this is my way of balancing things out by telling the stories of awesome people here in our area doing truly awesome things for others. But we aren't just telling you their stories. We are rewarding these people with a little cash, too. All right, we're here in Wilmington, Delaware, and you're about to meet a woman named Terry Burris. Now, we're in her neighborhood. She has no idea we're coming, but she is awesome. Hi. Hi, are you Terry? I am. Now, before we surprise her, a little background on why she's our first recipient of the You're Awesome Award. She's the person that delivers meals. She's the person that coordinates all kinds of activities in the community. So she is the most deserving person I know for this type of an honor. This is Terry on St. Patrick's Day, raising money for the Special Olympics. Here she is selling subs for Faithful Friends, an animal organization. And when the local homeless need food, Terry's there to feed them. I feel like she puts everyone else first, not only her kids, but the community. She's always volunteering. Um, I don't know how she does it. Terry is also a Lions Club member. It's a community organization that puts on food drives, recycles glasses, and more. She works to help the Red Cross, too. Her son, Andrew, knows all about that. He gets a, a lot of blood donated to the Red Cross every year. I take the sign wherever she wants it. I, you know, she wants the sign here, there. That's, that's me putting it up. Terry's also a lunch lady at Forwood Elementary. Have a good day. And when kids can't afford to buy an ice cream, guess who reaches into her own pocket to pay for them? You're welcome. In her best friend Diane's words, she's an angel on earth. Terry slides out the quarters, and she helps the kids get their ice cream treat at the end of the, the line, which is, you know, just... That's her. Terry's husband of 42 years, Steve, a Navy vet, suffered a stroke in 2014. Great wife? Great wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Wouldn't have any other. She takes care of him every day. Your friend here says you're awesome. On behalf of Moravia Health, uh -huh. you won $1,000. For being awesome. I love that. Awesome. Thank you. I'm speechless. I know. I know. Have you ever won anything before? No. You do so much. Why? It feels good to give back. That's what we all should do, is, is give back. That's how I feel. How will you use the money? I don't know, because I'm in total shock and disbelief. I'm so grateful to you, Jason, and Fox 29 for honoring Terry in this way, because she truly, truly is an awesome person. Everybody needs help, and it feels good to help people. It's the right thing to do. So, Terry, you're awesome. Can I have a hug? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being awesome for all you do for the community. Oh. You're awesome! Do you know anybody like Terry? We want to meet folks who you think are awesome. Tell us about them, and they can receive $1,000 just for being awesome. Go to fox29.com slash contest to click on the, and then click on the You're Awesome icon. Wow. How awesome is it that we have such awesome employees, not just in 
doing their day-to-day job in our schools, but out in our community. Thank you, Terry, for being awesome. And I also want to say thank you to Fox 29. What an awesome thing to do to recognize those who go above and beyond in the service to their community. Thank you for doing that. On October 20, uh, I'm sorry, on October 5th, 2023, the Siegfried Youth Leadership Program, SYLP, recognized Mount Pleasant High School teacher Robin Houghton as one of the three Delaware teachers for her support. Robin has arranged for students to participate in nine SYLP events. There have only been events four between Delaware and Chicago. The Siegfried Group and SYLP founder and CEO Rob Siegfried went to Mount Pleasant High School and was ex- went to Mount Pleasant High School as a student and is so appreciative of the school and Robin's support of the program. And the moment you've been waiting for, it is time for October's Sizzle Video. Toy en anglais. How do we say that in English? Star. Ça c'est très bien. Star. There's the bus. We're gonna go see Miss Anna and Miss Marguerite. So what do you think? Higher or lower? Yeah, higher. Good. Good job, Lucy. should give us all reason to be, proud to be, BST. Mr. President, that's my report. Fantastic. Any comments or questions from the board? Great. I love the sizzle video. Always outstanding. That'll take us on to public comment. Uh, Ms. Harris, do we have any Zoom speakers? No? There's two speakers here in the room. I'll call the first name. And then the second person on deck, just as a reminder, uh, everyone has two minutes to speak. We'll start when you start. Um, ask everyone to be respectful and courteous in the audience. And as speakers, this is your chance to be heard on topics relating to the Brandywine School District. So with that said, first up, we have Devin Jang, followed by Shanna Goodman. 
and you can come to the microphone in the middle there. <clears throat> Greetings to the board. My name is Devin Jung. I'm a junior at the University of Delaware. I'm a Brandywine School District alumni, and I'm a product of Delaware Public Schools. I'm also the co-founder of Make Us Visible Delaware, which is a group of advocates that want to bring Asian American history into Delaware Public Schools. Two weeks ago, we had a huge community launch event where we brought together teachers, students, parents, lawmakers, superintendents, and school board members to support our efforts. And we want to take this issue on multiple fronts. We want to take it on the state legislature through our state lawmakers, but also through our teachers, school board members, and administrators, because these are often the groups that are left behind when it comes to making and shaping education policy. I'm here today to see if we can work together towards this end. Five states have already passed laws requiring Asian American history to be taught in schools, and I think Delaware should be the next for a couple of reasons. First is because we should be teaching American history. No, we're not rewriting or altering American history, but we're telling American history. Students should learn about George Yaw DuPont. He was a soldier, a Thai immigrant who fought in the North for the Civil War, united the country, and freed the slaves. Students should also learn about Pio Decano, who took his state's alien land laws to the Washington Supreme Court, where those laws were ruled unconstitutional, granting Asian Americans, immigrants, the right to own property. Students should also learn about Jackie Young, a pivotal Asian Korean American woman who fought for Title IX in women's fairness in schools, and also Didar Baines, who built a big Sikh temple in California and encouraged and helped those from India find jobs in the United States. This is American history. Second, we believe that this is a public safety issue. You know, during COVID-19, we saw the sharp increases of anti-Asian hate crimes. We believe that when we can teach Asian American history in ways that are uplifting, we can see each other as neighbors, not as foreigners or a threat to our country. We believe that this is a long-term solution for students to learn about Asian American history, which will reduce violence in the long term. And lastly, our state is becoming more diverse. When I was a student here 10 years ago, I was one of the only Asian American students in my class. But now, BSD is getting more and more diverse. We're seeing more Asian American immigrants coming to Delaware, moving states to work in Delaware and raise their children here. So I believe that this visibility that we can provide our students by introducing Asian American history will benefit all students. And lastly, I brought a coloring book that my team and I made, which has a bunch of Asian American pioneers uh, in this book. We think that this should be a good starting point, and I hope to give each of the board members a copy. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your time. Um, we have your contact information. We can certainly follow up. Uh, always love seeing Brandywine anyway, School District alumni come on back and appreciate your efforts. Next up, we have Shanna Goodman. Shanna? Okay, great. Thank you. And that would be all for public comment tonight. Uh, if you have those books, you can leave them at the top or leave them with one of the administrators here. That would be fine. That'll take us into board member liaison reports. Uh, certainly, this has been a tough month for being out of town, illnesses, work obligations, and so forth. So we do not have updates for DSBA Executive Board or Legislative Committee. Um, District Finance Committee, uh, I did not attend that, but it's my understanding, uh, again, I had some low attendance for that one, uh, but they did have a quorum to uh, make a recommendation on the uh, monthly, monthly report and the minutes. That next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, November 8th at 5 p.m. Uh, we do not have health and wellness updates. Uh, Mr. Heller, Maintenance Advisory Committee. Uh, just a few updates. The Maintenance Advisory Committee met on October 10th at the new maintenance shop on Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, the committee got a tour of the new space, and that is awaiting final inspection to be put into service. The committee discussed the following points. Um, the district is eligible uh, for a $1.1 million solar grant for Claymont Elementary, Concord High School, and Brandywine High School. Those solar panels will save the district about $54,000 a year in energy costs. Um, and then combined together, that makes a 20-year payoff um, for that grant money. The grant has some logistical issues, though, with how school districts can actually spend the grant money and remain aligned with school finance regulations. So uh, uh, John Reed um, has figured out how to use the grant money by piggybacking onto a Denerec solar contract that 
to figure out a way around that solution as he always does. Um, and another creative uh, solution by John Reed um, came to ordering the HVAC equipment that needs to be replaced in Mount Pleasant High School. So he shared that if that HVAC project was combined with the bid documents for the entire project, it would have increased the cost by 20% on the HVAC portion of the work. So by uh, separating that out and doing it as a separate project, it saved the district 20% on the equipment and install. Um, there was a, a new bill that we discussed that would bring school facilities under DENEREC and the Department of Health. And along with that would come some new standards for things like humidity and classrooms. The important part of that that we discussed was that most schools in the state don't have the ability to measure humidity in classrooms that are requirements of, of this uh, new legislation. Um, so we talked about how this would prove to be a very expensive endeavor to simply comply with those forthcoming requirements. Um, it sounds like in some cases the entire HVAC or air, air handler system might have to be replaced in order to have the monitoring that's required for uh, these requirements. So there's more to come on that. Uh, the committee also received a brief update on the certificate of necessity request, basically that there is no update yet, and the awarding of the CNs was pushed from the end of October to early November to align with the state budget presentation. Uh, the next meeting will be November 14th at the bus yard. Great. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Uh, Ms. Stock, I know we heard a little bit about parents and the citizen advisory committee this evening uh, earlier. Do you have any uh, other updates or comments? Yeah, I do. I just wanted to give a, an overview. Uh, the Parents and Citizen Advisory Committee met this past Thursday, October 12th. We hosted a dinner and presentation where board member Ralph Ackerman reviewed both the purpose and the history of the PCAC. We also heard informative presentations from Assistant and Deputy Superintendents Mr. Kenny Rivera and Dr. Lisa Lawson about the amazing educational opportunities and programming for our youngest preschool learners, elementary, middle, and high school students. Our Director of Facilities and Operations, John Reed, presented about how we have used our past and current capital money to renovate and repair our buildings in the most efficient and in the most frugal manner, as well as future needs. Uh, Ms. Jill Flory, our uh, Chief Financial Officer, educated the community about referendums and how we use federal, state, and local funds to pay and edu to educate our students. Our Superintendent Lincoln Holler ended the presentation with an invitation for advisory committee members to serve this year and give us thoughtful and honest feedback so we can continually work for improvement. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to Ms. Lavina Jones-Davis, our Director of Community Engagement and Partnership, and our Administrative Assistant, Ms. Tia Harris, for planning a flawless an engaging evening. More to come at our next meeting, Wednesday, November 28th at 5.30. Great, thank you, Ms. Stock. Uh, Parent Council of Students with Disabilities. Um, I will be giving that report for Ms. Pigeon. Yep. Oh, very good. Yep, the Parent Council for Parent Students with Disabilities met on Tuesday, October 10th at Mount Pleasant Elementary and via Zoom. Representatives from each school were invited to attend. During the meeting, the council members reviewed the purpose of the parent council and several accomplishments for the last school year. Participants then engaged in collaborative planning to identify ways in which the council can connect and support other parents of students with disabilities. The council is in the process of finalizing the priority areas for the school year in order to develop resources, arrange presentations, and organize events that address the selected areas. More important information will be shared with families through mailings, social media, IEP meetings, and on the school websites. Parents can connect directly with the parent council representatives through the parent council email address for each school. Please ask the special education coordinator in your child's school for more information. The next meeting will be held Tuesday, December 5th uh, at Claymont Elementary School via and via Zoom. Great, thank you very much, Ms. Stock. Uh, Wilmington Learning Collaborative, Reverend Perry, any follow-up after Dr. Burgos' presentation? Um, the only uh, addition that I would like to add, uh, or the only information I'd like to offer tonight is that our meeting, our next meeting is tomorrow, um, October the 17th at the Bayard School, 200 and South DuPont Street in Wilmington, Delaware, 19805. We invite everyone to uh, attend if you are able to. We It is a hybrid meeting, so uh, a virtual option is available and can be found. The link can be found online. Great. Thank you. And I think I said Reverend Perry and Reverend Dickinson. <laughs> I'm still catching up. Um, 
91.7 WMPH has not had any meetings since, but I did want to share um, the uh, CTE teacher, Paul Wishingrad, shared a nice voicemail to the committee that we're working on getting some clearances for that we can maybe share more publicly. Uh, just a testimonial for someone that had found the radio station uh, just this week, lived in the area for a while, and I guess it's come to my understanding that longtime radio station 99.5 WJVR has changed its format. So I would just encourage people, if you listened to that station before and aren't listening to it now, to give 91.7 WMPH a chance. And if you hear people talking about their radio station has gone away, encourage them to listen. The Mount Pleasant Zone 91.7 isn't just a radio station. It's a great program that teaches kids investigative journalism, managing deadlines, technical production, things that you know can set them up for real world jobs or uh, prepare them for their higher education. So tuning in to listen is not just for your own musical enjoyment, but also supporting the community and supporting the Brain Line School District. So 91.7 WMPH, check it out. Any additional uh, comments or updates? Yes, uh, Mr. Scrubba, I have one. Um, on September 28th, members of the Educator Recruitment and Retention Committee met to network and reflect on the education profession. We determine our subcommittees as follows for this year. Uh, we'll have recruitment, staff support, and staff retention, legislative impact, induction program, um, which deals with the Delaware Department of Education, as well as mentorship, and equity, diversity, inclusion. Um, in addition, we heard from Dr. Tina Mitchell, the program director of Masters of Teaching and Alternative Routes Teaching Program at Delaware State University. Our next meeting will be Thursday, November 30th at 4 o'clock in the district conference room. Fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Cox. Anyone else? All right. All right. At this time, uh, thank you, members, for your reports. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. A motion, Ms. Stock. Second, Mr. Heller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to accept the monthly personnel report as discussed in executive session. So moved. Second. Motion, Ms. Stock. Second, Mr. Heller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to approve, uh, accept student matters as discussed in executive session. I make the motion. Oh, I'll give it to Mr. Heller on the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Reverend Dickerson. It's on the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On to old business. First item, as we discussed <coughs> last month, excuse me, <coughs> we uh, have been in the process uh, upon the retirement of Ms. Karen Gordon uh, to filling the vacant board seat according to state law. Um, earlier this month, we had uh, board interviews for the candidates who had submitted their uh, information. Um, and I just want to say we had fantastic candidates. We thank all of them uh, for their time and interest in serving. Uh, everyone brought something unique to the conversation, and I would encourage each of them to uh, reach out. We will do the same in order to, you know, look for your participation. If you're not the selected candidate tonight, you know, we certainly see that you're an engaged member of our school community, and we'd love to have you participate in one of the many um, committees that we have available and open to the public. So with that, do we have any nominations? Mr. President, before I make a nomination, I just want to echo those comments. I was really impressed with, first of all, the number of community members who were interested um, in serving the district, and then the experience and qualifications that they each brought. So I also hope that all of them choose to stay involved with the district and uh, serve us in some way. But we can only choose one. Um, so with that, it's my honor to nominate the individual who rose to the top for me. I'm proud to nominate Dr. Sean Jagaday for the vacant school board seat for nominating District 8. Second. I have a motion and a second. 
do you have any other nominations? Any discussion on the nomination of Dr. Jagadee? Just that I believe she, she will serve the interest of the district. Uh, again, I, uh, uh, like I said, you know, we had some very good candidates. It was a, for me, it was a tough decision, um, narrowing it down to, to a finalist. Um, but I would agree that Dr. Jagadi is a fantastic uh, candidate, certainly plenty of credentials on her resume and just some of the, for me, a very compelling cheerleader for the district through her own personal experiences. Um, and I, I would look forward to working with her on this board. So with that, we have a nomination, uh, nomination. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Dr. Jagadi, who I think is here tonight. <laughs> You'd just like to maybe stand up and be recognized? I guess we'll uh, we'll be in touch with uh, dates for swearing in, so we can start sharing information and get you hit the ground running. Uh, and again, thank you to all the candidates uh, who you know put themselves out there and were willing to serve their community in this capacity. We greatly appreciate it, and we look forward to working with you in another capacity uh, through our committees. Thank you. Old Business 9B, uh, Superintendent Holder, you have a referendum planning update for us? Yes, Mr. Skorbat. This is not an action item. It is simply a, an update for information only. Uh, prior to the last board meeting on September 18th, our district finance committee, which is a committee of community stakeholders who have expertise in the area of finance and business management, uh, along with uh, several members of the board, uh, a representative from the district, uh, made a unanimous decision to request to the board that they begin the process of planning for a referendum. At the September 18th meeting, the board directed uh, the superintendent and CFO to move forward with the planning. One, the board to know that uh, we have been actively engaged in looking at our finances by department, uh, trying to develop what we believe will be a fiscally sound path forward. Uh, at the same time, our director of facilities, Mr. John Reed, did submit several certificates of necessity to the state to see if uh, we could receive any state funding towards those capital projects. The state received quite a few uh, certificates of necessity from districts across the state. They are in the process of evaluating those requests. And we are told that by the end of October, first week of November, we should hear from the state whether or not any of our certificates of necessity were approved. Once we know that information, uh, we'll be able to come back to the board, present uh, a capital request if there is one, an operational request. And tonight I would uh, make a recommendation and, and ask that the board consider uh, allowing us to hold a board workshop prior to the November 13th Board of Ed regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, I would suggest that that Monday before, November 6th. By then, we hope to know the results of the Capitol. Uh, that will have given us quite amount of time to work on the operating request. A workshop would allow us to present the information to the board and allow the board to ask questions and uh, review everything uh, ahead of the November 13th board meeting where we would seek an, an action item to approve the request and a date for uh, a referendum sometime this school year. I would also, in that recommendation, ask the board to consider inviting the district finance committee 
to attend that workshop as partners uh, so they can sit next to us, vet the uh, proposals, and share their insights and feedback. Again, I that was just mentioned that the next DFC meeting was November 8th, uh, and that would be a time when uh, the CFO and, and myself would be presenting that same information to the DFC. So it would allow us to knock out a meeting, but also allow uh, the board to hear full comments from the district finance committee as well. Yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea. <clears throat> I'll certainly look to get that on the calendar. We'll do so. Yeah. Is it okay? Yep. All right, so we removed 10A when we approved the agenda, which leads us to Ms. Flore with the monthly monthly financial report for September 30th. evening, members of the board, Superintendent Kohler, and our audience members left, um, and our staff. I have a very brief uh, finance report. This is as of September 30th. Tax bills were due on September 30th, and so it's the, um, the quiet waiting time until uh, our tax money comes in at the end of October for the entire rest of the school year. The good news is that we had sufficient funds. We were right on track and um, are going into that receipt of taxes um, with our carry forward balance that got us there. Um, on the local side, we've received 24.5% of revenues. Um, that's local, state 75.3%, so a total of, in the operating budget of 63.5% revenues received. On the expenses, there's only one, forgive the um, spreadsheets that don't really translate to presentations well, I apologize, but this is what the finance committee with the magnifying glasses do, um, do dig into. So the only one that's a negative on the, it's the next slide is the expenditure. Um, the only one that's in the negative isn't really negative, it's we carved out, and it's the same one from last month, carved out JROTC separately, as well as Bush tuition. And so it's just um, a negative because it wasn't a budget line, but in order to separate it from other local um, revenues. But all told, we're at 25.23% expended at this point in the fiscal year versus last year. This is a new category or column all the way on the right, which tracks this point in time year to year. Um, so as of September 30th of last year, we were at 351 so we're under our expenditures. Part of that is us managing in order to maintain that cash flow and that necessary. We're not doing year long purchase orders. We're, we're doing purchase orders for the first quarter of the fiscal year in order to have that, um, have that balance available. So going through the rest, the final one of the presentation is the cash flow and that hasn't changed. That still estimates us um, with a $6 million projected ending balance on June 30th, which is how we even started the conversation. We'd expect it to be at 8.8, .8, and um, now is with that declining local funds balance going into um, the end of the year is what's precipitating that um, conversation on referendum and need for an increase in lo local funds. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are we still in the kind of true up period of the September 30th count or are we finalized on numbers? We've we're finalized on the September 30th count, but we're not finalized on the funding side. So what happens is they spin all of that and we're relative to others. And so for appropriations where let's say it's the, um, the opportunity funds or let's say it's equalization, if it's a static number that's in the budget, our relative share of the state pots of money changed slightly with the September 30th count. I have a, uh, this may be a silly question. I'm, I'm curious what the commonalities are that put like the JROTC and Bush on the same line. It's, it's other revenue that comes in from outside sources, but it's not revenue that comes in like facilities um, fees or those kinds of things. So it was a way of kind of isolating uh, uh, those ex that revenue 
so that when you see the expenditures, we know exactly what they're tied to, that it's not just, you know, a, a school-based local expense, that it's very specific to the, how we got that money in. And did the committee make a recommendation on the monthly report? The committee, I updated the committee on um, the board action to direct uh, the superintendent and myself, um, and they were grateful and talked about the possibility and liked the idea of the possibility of meeting together. And yes, the committee did approve the monthly report. Anything else? Any last minute questions for the board? No? Do I hear a motion to accept the monthly financial report for September 30th, 2023, subject to audit? So moved. Okay, second. Motion, Ms. Stock. Second, Reverend Dickerson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank so you. I just wanted to say one thing. On behalf of the staff that's here tonight, um, you truly heard a servant leader tonight. You heard a tireless leader and a fearless leader. And we just wanted to say happy Boss's Day to our leader. General information and meeting dates. Uh, we have scheduled our regular board meeting for Monday, November 13th, uh, regular board meeting Monday, December 11th, and regular board meeting January 8th with a to be determined uh, board workshop in there as recommended by the superintendent, which will get uh, November, 6th? No, November 6th, that will be, and we'll get that posted. Any last minute comments or questions from the board? No, hearing none. Uh, thank you everyone for your time and participation this evening. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Right. Second. Motion, Mr. Heller, second, Ms. Stock. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That concludes our October meeting. And spoiler alert, Phillies are up one nothing. Oh. So, I'm behind. Yep. Samsung, I'm behind. You must be on Apple. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.